I do not use this occasion to officially welcome to our new staff member to the Department of Marine Resources office here in Grand Bahama, Ms. Chastity Cash. Where's Chastity? Can you stand so that we can recognize you? She is our, <laughs> Ms. Cash is our newest uh, employee. In fact, she just commenced her duties on Monday of this week. So I want to say publicly welcome you to the staff of the Department of Marine Resources. It is indeed a pleasure to be with you today as we celebrate the realization of one of our key goals for the protection of our marine resources. The last time we were gathered in this very spot was three years ago. That gathering was to celebrate the commissioning of two vehicles for our animal control unit. There was a different permanent secretary and a different minister responsible for this portfolio. Like I said, things were different. What is not different, however, is our deep and abiding commitment to provide the officers who carry out the responsibility for enforcement the tools they require. Uh, let me say that we have made some progress. Are we where we need to be? As a ministry, I would say no, but are we on the right road, headed in the right direction and picking up speed? I would say yes. One of the challenges we've had in Grand Bahama is insufficient personnel to execute what is a very seriously uh, challenging job of enforcing the laws of the Bahamas as it relates to the protection of our marine environment. We are fortunate that we have increased our complement to eight persons in the Department of Marine Resources, four persons being added just since 2018. In fact, over the last uh, three years, we have had approval to hire the largest complement of fisheries officers in the history of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And we are grateful. We are grateful that policymakers are public servants who are in, the charge, in charge of the public personnel. They are appreciating the fact that if we are to protect our marine resources, there has to be a dramatic increase, not only in capacity, but in terms of the number of employees that are available throughout the length and breadth of the Bahamas. The truth is, we are not a, uh, a small island state, we are a big ocean state. And it is in our collective interest to increase the complement of marine officers. Consider it for a moment. We have a large cadre, as we should, of police officers, defense force officers, prison officers. It only stands to reason that we ought to increase the complement of marine officers, fisheries officers, throughout the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And we are pleased to have the leadership of Ladina Pelicanos, the officer in charge of Grand Bahama. She's highly motivated and she is an example of what young people can do when you give them an opportunity. And we have so many young persons who are directing affairs in Grand Bahama across the subsectors of agriculture and marine resources. I wish to say to the Member of Parliament for West End and Bibbidi, it is our intention to set up a satellite office in West End. We were well on the way in the east prior to Dorian and had commitment uh, for a space. We intend to resume the mission to ensure that in both locations, east and west, we establish a presence. Both areas are important uh, fishing areas and it's important that we give the technical support and enforcement support necessary. Today, we are continuing what has been uh, a tradition really in this department under successive administrations to increase the complement of vessels and, and while the amount of funds allocated thus far is significant, uh, we believe a lot more is required. We've spent somewhere in the vicinity of $704,000 since 2018 to add four additional marine patrol vessels. Uh, I need not litigate the issue, but you would be aware that Dorian, unfortunately, uh, set us back in terms of the damages done, not just to vehicles and to facilities, but also to a number of our patrol craft. But we're excited 
that we are back on track. What countries do is rebound from disasters. And, and as I had an opportunity to say just recently, we were, we were cast down but not destroyed. And uh, we, we were hurt by the tragedies of Dorian and the pandemic, but we are rebounding and building back stronger than before. I'm pleased that the Director of Marine Resources and his talented team have worked closely with the manufacturers and distributors of these vessels to make sure that they were properly equipped with uh, GPS and VHF radios, strobe light sirens, and of course, twin four-stroke environmentally friendly Yamaha uh, engines. And so we, we, we are excited uh, about this opportunity to patrol and protect uh, in the environment. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today we have representation from law enforcement agencies. In particular, let me single out the Royal Bahamas Defense Force and Police Force, who we have worked closely with over many years, as, as, as many of you know already. They are also fisheries uh, officers, and we are appreciative of, of the contributions you continue to make in terms of ensuring that persons understand the law and comply with it. Grand Bahama is not our only focus, obviously, and we will continue to work to ensure that Abaco has its right complement of vessels, and of course, uh, Eleuthera, Bimini, and I knew that that brought excitement to the Member of Parliament for West End and Bimini, who has petitioned us consistently that whatever you have for elsewhere in the Bahamas, uh, just remember West End and, and Bimini. The same has been done by the Member uh, of, of Parliament for Central, who, who loves to remind us uh, that he has some historic communities in his portfolio and he wants to ensure that you don't take everything to North Andrus uh, that recently has had an enormous amount of infrastructural development, bridges, roads, uh, etc. And, and we're not hating, uh, we're, we're just uh, um, you know, insisting that, that, that a, lot, a lot of more resources come, of course, to these communities. And so the, the Member of Parliament for North Andrews is also the Parliamentary uh, Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, and we're grateful for his interventions on many of the important initiatives that we are engaged in. Uh, it is really an honor to finally make this point that we are increasing the complement of vehicles necessary for us to execute our job. The staff here in Grand Bahama, they have been adamant, and we give them permission to speak their mind freely. In hindsight, that may have been a mistake, um, but, but they, they clearly indicate that if you want the job executed, then you must ensure that we have the, the necessary tools, and I, I, I believe that you are correct. Uh, the reality is that brilliant ideas do not simply flow from the top uh, down, um, they flow in all directions and our success uh, thus far has been a result of a, of a team of professionals who uh, want to support a vision and an agenda but underscore that it can only be done if you provide the requisite resources so that they can do their job. And we've heard you, we are allocating an additional $216,000 uh, to ensure that we have new vehicles and we're continuing to petition finance uh, to make sure that we get the additional resources that are required. Hurricane Dorian uh, disrupted many livelihoods. Um, among those persons present today is an outstanding Bahamian a leader in the uh, religious community, but also an entrepreneur who is responsible for significant employment and income generation. Um, I'm referring to uh, Minister Kenneth Lewis. And he has, he has certainly been a pace setter in terms of the marine resources sector and we are reliably informed he will soon be venturing in a significant way into the agriculture sector. So we are grateful uh, to hear this news. And listen, and when he comes, he's come big. Uh, you know, we were in church the other day and, and he was talking about this big, fat, juicy life that we must have. Um, and we thought that that was, that was incredible. We were wondering in the initial part of the statement where he was headed, but, but God stayed with him. And, uh, and we agreed with him. <laughs> we, we, agreed, we agreed with him. Uh, but, but again, Minister Lewis 
like many other entrepreneurs, had tremendous damage. And we're pleased that the hard work of Mr. Bethel, the entire senior staff, the Department of Agriculture, Ganel Pelicanos, that a tremendous amount of resources was allocated to the restoration of a number of the entrepreneurs. We haven't gotten to everybody yet, but in excess of $300,000 has been made available in conjunction with the Small Business Development Center to ensure that a number of our fishes can consistently rebuild. We have a grant of somewhere in the vicinity of $5 million for farmers and fishers uh, that was separate and apart from the Dorian relief and we are continuing to access those funds to ensure that our fishers, our food processors, other stakeholders that ensure that the supply chain continues with marine product, that they have the required resources. We are also happy to be collaborating with the Food and Agriculture Organization that sent a mission, multiple missions to the Bahamas to help us to rebound. As a result of their intervention and our own budget, we've been able to provide fiberglass cloth and resin to assist small boat repairs. We're providing uh, condos that will also assist and of course trap making uh, for marine uh, products. We believe that this is an important way of generating not just employment, but wealth, and we will continue to allocate resources to this area in order to help entrepreneurs to fully rebound. As you would be aware, we've taken a, a policy position to reserve the Bahamian patrimony, our marine resources, this scarce resources for Bahamians, and we ask others that wish to fully enjoy to cast their lot with us. Otherwise, we have determined the levels at which they may engage in our environment in order to benefit from it. In terms of diving, we believe that it is important that we uh, excite our young people about the opportunities in commercial fishing, and we have set out on a mission to work with other stakeholders to do just that. We are working now with the National Training Agency, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, we have designed a, an excellent diving program that is now into its second year where we will train and beha our Bahamians who will become party divers. They will be certified. They will also be able to use air compressors safely. Uh, we will train divers on symptoms related to decompression illness. They will learn first aid and CPR and of course the value of work. Uh, because it's one thing to be technically sound if your work ethic isn't solid, again, we would still be losing the battle. Today, some 21 Grand Bahamians are enrolled in this joint dive initiative, and we fully expect another 20 Grand Bahamians will be added to this uh, cohort in approximately two weeks. We are excited. 41 Grand Bahamians will gain additional skills to work in commercial, commercial fishing or other areas uh, that will require their certification. Uh, one of the significant accomplishments just recently was to finally have the passage of the fisheries bill, which is a result of the hard work of both administrations over time. As you know, governance is in fact a relay and we were happy to have closed uh, this particular race, but the, but the job is not over. We know uh, for, for a fact that if the Bahamas is going to succeed in utilizing its marine resources, it's absolutely important that we develop a strategic plan. Uh, Jerry Kelly and the Policy and Planning Division is working closely with Carlos Pugh to develop a strategic plan for the overall ministry and the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources, but also for the entire sector. One component or one subsector of this is the blue economy. And that is all things that are marine related, terrestrial as well as uh, near shore and ocean. And so this fisheries bill assists us in laying out a proper strategic plan and a plan of action with timetables on how we can better manage our marine species. In fact, one component of the fisheries bill is to ensure that we have plans on how we will manage the each marine species like the iconic conch, like the lobster, like the Nassau grouper. Two of those three, the conch and the grouper, are under threat. 
of extinction if we do not do the correct things to protect them. The fisheries legislation was designed to ensure that we make the correct decisions as a nation. It was about diversification, about making sure that we do not leave this horrible pandemic and return to business as usual where we are relying narrowly on tourism and financial services as opposed to broadening our economic base to bring a larger number of Bahamians into the mainstream of this economy where they own a piece of the rock. What better way to do that than through marine resources and through agriculture? And so, ladies and gentlemen, finally, and having grown up in the Pentecostal tradition, finally often means in the final two points, uh, that, that it is important for us to ensure that in West Grand Bahama, in East Grand Bahama, the persons are no longer harvesting and selling you a handful of accounts because they know beyond the shadow of a doubt that these are immature accounts. However, people often say hungry mouth gotta feed. We wanna make sure that we bring that to an end, that we raise awareness, and that we ensure that the laws of the Bahamas are complied with. We want to make sure that there's no further landing throughout Grand Bahamas, throughout the rest of the Bahamas, of undersized uh, lobster. We want to make sure that persons are not attacking groupers when they are in their mating uh, ritual, thousands of them, and persons going to deplete those resources. If we're going to be effective at enforcement, then it is important to have more marine patrol craft such as the one we are going to commission in just a few moments. Ladies and gentlemen, we value our visitors to the Bahamas. But we've said to them that it's important that they utilize our resources in the manner that we prescribe. And so we've made some fundamental adjustments in terms of making sure that we change the buy limits on what visitors our leisure travel, sport fishers, what they are able to harvest when they are in Bahamian waters. We're removing conch from that bag limit. If they wish to enjoy it, they should come ashore and get some conch salad, crack conch, conch and dough, grilled conch. What time is lunch? Uh, but the bottom line is that we wish for them to come on shore. We also eliminated the loophole where persons have been uh, indicating that they have 20 persons on the boat and everybody has a buy limit. We are now confining the limit to the boat itself, which dramatically reduces the, the catch. We value our sports fishers from the north, but we also say to them that when we have a closed season, you ought to obey and we're appreciative of the, of the uh, American authorities who are now collaborating closely with us. We've been bullish on ensuring that poachers are dealt with when they come in Bahamian waters. Over the last three years, we have had the largest uh, set of interdictions, uh, especially because of the work of the Defense Force along with our fishers, in the history of the Bahamas. We've captured more poachers than at any other period. The fines by the judiciary have been the largest in the history uh, of, of the Bahamas, and we believe that the judiciary is sending a clear message that they put a high value on our marine environment. But just in case, uh, Bahamians wish to make fishers from the north or others from the south the boogeyman, I wish to also unfortunately say that we have some Bahamians who are also engaged in illegal, unregulated, unreported fishing. And we want you to know that the present legislation that we have passed is extremely harsh in its penalties. And so we wish for you to be compliant with the laws of the Bahamas. It is in your best interest. What we seek to protect today through those regulations, through putting in place marine protected areas, is for your future and for your children and grandchildren unborn. And so we wish for you to be compliant. If you have views, share it with us. That's precisely why we have involved in, at the highest level of discussion, persons uh, like Kenneth Lewis, who can provide advice to the ministry, or Oswald Roll, or Fritz Thompson, or Kirk Neely, so that they could inform us. We do not believe for a moment that our appointment or selection have converted us into authorities, and that's why we rely on all of you as stakeholders to keep our feet to the fire and can constantly advise us. So with those few words, I wish to say today, it is an honor for us to dedicate this vessel, 
the vehicle and to rededicate ourselves as personnel to ensure the success of this department which will protect this country's patrimony for generations unborn. Thank you very much. Thank you.